The County Council's network has been aware for some years that technology is going to need to play a very central role in continuing to deliver high quality services in social care in the years to come. It's particularly important for county authorities which have ageing demographics and are likely to feel these pressures in the future. So CCN has been keen to raise this issue and put it on the government's radar. But we don't necessarily have the expertise and that's why we're delighted to be working with Tunstall so that we can ally what we know about social care with an organisation that fully understands the landscape of the potential and in innovation that exists out there for investing in digital technology. And Tunstall are delighted to be working with the CCN as well. And we ran a round table back in November 2020 looking at the importance of technology in supporting local authorities but then thinking about the uh, the government reform agenda for social care in our findings we looked at why it's important to use uh, technology uh, to support social care and in this report uh, titled adopting the right technology to transform social care we're looking at taking that why and then applying it to the how so how do we take what we know and apply it in practice One of the reasons that we think the report is particularly timely is that the government put integrated care systems onto a statutory footing last year, which promises to revolutionise the way that health and social care work together. One of the key messages that we're really putting forward in the report is the need for social care to invest in technology, not in isolation, but with health partners. Now, integrated care systems do hold that promise of being able to get much better systems that can talk to each other, share data more easily, and actually work together with the common goal of ensuring that everybody lives their best possible life with high quality services supporting both their health and care. Um, that's one of the messages that we really want people to take from this report. Well, I think the ultimate goal that we set out in the report is that we want technology to be delivering higher quality social care for citizens. And that could mean just investing in an app might make it so much easier for a family living with somebody with MS to be able to actually get out of the house for short periods of time without needing to employ respite care or to you know, avoid some sort of home care visits. So from that point of view, you would hope that it will benefit the citizen, but it will also benefit the local authority in terms of what they actually have to lay out in terms of the resourcing. But perhaps the thing that we're most excited about is how technology may be able to prevent those care needs in the first place. Yeah, and John, I think that's, that's a really important point, is the, the prevention and the using technology as an enabler. Uh, and I've often talked about uh, if you get it right for the citizen, then the system benefits as a result. And I think that's exactly uh, what needs to happen. Get, uh, uh, get the technology and the right technology in play and both the citizen and the system benefit. Well, we were delighted when People at the Heart of Care was published that the government listened to the recommendation that we made in our last report, which was that there needs to be specific funding to allow social care to invest in the technology that it needs. Now 150 million has been put forward by the government as part of the reform agenda till 2025. The first tranche of that has already started coming into ICSs. So we would recommend that all local authorities, if they haven't already, uh, get in touch with their ICS to actually find out how they can best make use of that money. And some of the priorities that have been put out there would be investing in centre-based fraud prevention, for example, improving digital care records. But essentially it's pump priming money that can actually start to kickstart the investment in technology in an area. But of course, good local authorities should also be thinking, shouldn't they, about how this technology can start paying for itself. Yeah, and John, I completely agree with that. And a lot of this is about uh, cost avoidance to the system, uh, looking at how your staff can be more efficient because of uh, less uh, visits or supporting uh, a, a, a fewer number of, of care visits, uh, which sort of fits very nicely in with the prevention agenda 
and uh, that of what, so what the government is trying to do as part of the social care reform. So I think that uh, you know, cultural change is, is really important and the uh, necessity to embed that uh, from the top. And in the report, we've looked at uh, using the SMART acronym, but phrased in a slightly different way. And what I mean by that is where S stands for simple. So define outcomes that are simple and easy to understand. Secondly, meaningful. Make sure that the workforce understands what is expected of them and is engaged in the change process. That things are agreed, so work collaboratively with the workforce, seeking agreement to embed the outcomes and that cultural change will be more accepted. R stands for review. And what I mean by that is include system review and continuous improvement when you design the service in the beginning. Lastly, a T stands for test and retest. Don't be frightened to change, and if things don't work, fix them. Fail fast and fail quickly. I mean, digital solutions have the potential to completely transform social care for many people's lives, but it's not going to come without its challenges either. And one of the key challenges we know for our members is that broadband access and the infrastructure around digital technology can be quite patchy in certain areas. And that means that local authorities are going to have to be quite strategic about where they actually invest to get the, the maximum effect and impact that they can at this stage, wouldn't you say, Angus? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, it's, I think we need to look at uh, what solutions are in place uh, and thinking about sort of uh, um, local authority black spots, but which are inevitably are, uh, making sure that the right solutions are in the right places at the right time to support uh, the uh, citizens in their local communities. So basically make sure in those black spots, that's where you're maximising your staff time to go there and actually using the technology and other parts where it may be more effective. I think that's absolutely right, John. One thing local authorities need to be aware of is the UK is currently undergoing a major upgrade of its digital infrastructure. We're moving from analog to digital, which basically means that our old school telecoms, the phone lines we've grown up with, are actually going to be shifted to an internet-based system. Now actually for users, this should be a seamless transition and most those of us who use a landline might experience this, maybe noticing a slight change in the dialing tone, but there could be some more deeper implications for where older technology that's based on analog protocols is actually affected by the switch. And that obviously has a major impact on social care. Now I understand that there are some safeguards that are being put in place, DCMS have actually thought about this, but local authorities need to be proactive nonetheless, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, I think you picked on a really good point. We are working with uh, um, organisations such as the government and telecoms providers uh, in this space. But what I would urge local authorities to do is be proactive themselves. So maybe think about the timing of the upgrades in your area and understand from your local providers what is happening. Then write a, an upgrade plan, what needs to be done and when. Thirdly, uh, understand the risks, what is going to happen uh, when that switch occurs. And lastly, make sure you're communicating to users and that staff and citizens alike what is going to happen and when and what they need to do about it. Now, John, we recognise this is so important that we dedicated a whole chapter in our report to this upgrade. So I would urge you to uh, read that and take on board uh, what we said in the report. The stakeholders that uh, we refer to in the report start with citizens. Citizens are at the centre of everything we do, whether that's via technology, whether that's the local authority providing other services to them. If we get things right for the citizen, the system benefits as a result. But John, there's, there's other uh, stakeholders that we need to think about as well. 
Yeah, we identify a number of key stakeholders that should be kept informed at all stages within the report. One would be social care providers who deliver so much of the vital services around citizens. A second one would be your staff, the most vital resource, and you need to make sure that they're given adequate training and preparation for any introduction of new technology. A third one would be health. It's, we know it's so vital to get health and social care joined up, and your ICS should provide an excellent new vehicle for helping make sure that this communication is happening. In most local authorities, the voluntary and community sector plays a vital support for citizens around social care. So make sure that you keep them informed about any changes that you intend to bring in. And finally, the government has a really crucial role in terms of supporting local authorities and providing the right advice and support around say things like data sharing protocols. But local authorities should also be seeking to make sure that they are trying to feed back and feed into government what support they actually need so that they can actually provide it to you when you need it.